There's a lot of content and quite a few LUTs out there aimed at helping us get a great day for night look in our images. And yet I very rarely see this look accomplished well. I think there's a couple of reasons for this, but the main one from a colorist perspective is that day for night isn't really a look in the sense that you can deploy it across an entire timeline and get good results. Day for night is more of an intent that requires not only timeline level or macro level adjustments, but also shot level adjustments to really pull it off. Let me show you what I mean here inside of Resolve. So right now I am in a brand new project where I've yet to do any grading. All I've done thus far are the same two things that I always do at the beginning of a project. I've set up my color management and I have built out my template node tree and rippled it across all of my shots. So this node tree that you see right here, it's not currently doing anything. It's just empty placeholders for me to perform my work in. And my color management is something that's happening behind the scenes that's taking what the camera saw and transforming it to what my display can show using good color science. If you want to learn about either of these subjects, I have entire videos on both. I encourage you to go check out. For today, let's stay focused on our day for night look. We're going to do this in two pieces. The first piece, I want to start by looking at what is that macro level adjustment? What are those things that are going to stay the same from shot to shot to shot? But in order to build that, we need to start by working on our shot level stuff. So we're gonna do things sort of out of order from how I might normally do a look development process when grading, which would be to start there and then go over to shot level things. In our case today, we're gonna to do enough shot level work so that we can build out that look level of stuff and then ripple that across all of our shots. So here in my timeline, let's look here at shot number three to start. Another thing that I wanna emphasize with day for night looks is it's often best to start with the widest frame in your scene because it's going to be the most difficult. There's gonna be the most uh, difficult uh, sort of uh, set of tasks to accomplish here. A couple of them that pop up are, you're gonna to have to deal most likely with skies when you have wider frames. Skies are something that are difficult to contend with when you're doing a day for night feel. And it also means when you have a wider frame that your subject is gonna to tend to be smaller in that frame, meaning that they're gonna be harder to make out, right? They're gonna be harder to see. So we wanna start with the wide shot because we know if we can solve it here, if we can make it look good here, then we're gonna have an easier go, if anything, when we start to get into tighter material. So let's start by roughing in our shot level adjustments so that we can build out that overall sort of scene level adjustment that we're gonna hit in just a moment, okay? So the main thing, the driver of a day for night look is an exposure pull, right? We're gonna have less exposure, less light, less ambient light bouncing around the space when we are in a night context as opposed to a day context, right? So here in my exposure node that I've already got set up, I'm gonna take my offset and I'm just gonna to start to pull this downward. And really what I'm looking for here is how dark can I go without losing my subject? Something that we're gonna emphasize throughout our conversation today is that day for night is all about feeling like night as opposed to looking like night. Because oftentimes what night looks like is really, really dark, as in you can't see stuff. Can you remember the last time you were outside at night away from artificial light? It's probably pretty dark, probably pretty tough to see things, right? We don't necessarily want that when we're grading. We need to be able to make things out. So we're going to go for what I would call movie dark here. So this is a great example of this very first shot. I'm gonna go as far as I can, but I'm not gonna go so far that I can no longer see my subject. And we're gonna contend with the fact that we may need this shot to still feel a little bit heavier, a little bit more kind of inky, night-like uh, in some subsequent adjustments. But for now, this is a good place to start. And this gives me the context that I need to flip back over and start working on my overall day for night look or feel, okay? So for that, we're gonna go over here to the timeline level because adjustments that I make here at the timeline level are going to affect not only this shot, but all the shots in this timeline, which is exactly what I want. These are the pieces that are going to be consistent, that are gonna stay the same, that are not gonna change from shot to shot, that are gonna give my day for night feel some consistency to it. We're gonna do two things here. The first thing that I wanna do, I'm gonna go ahead and label this node and call it shadows. I really just wanna soften out my shadows. I don't wanna lose contrast, but I want to have a softer transition into my deepest shadows in the image, okay? So the way that I'm gonna do that is to go over here to my custom curves, and I'm gonna pick up my very bottom black point, and then pair that with the addition of a toe, like this. 
And I'm just going to feel this out. Another thing that I'll emphasize throughout our conversation today, everything with day for night is feel, right? We're making a big adjustment. We're really reimagining the context of what was photographed. And we're trying to make it feel like something rather than to necessarily look like something. It is a highly imaginative exercise, maybe even more so than most color grading or color grading a uh, traditional, say, day exterior scene. So we want to embrace that and just go by feel and feel things out to get to a good result, of course, within uh, a sensible framework like the one that I'm showing you here today. So I'm just feeling out this toe adjustment and trying to get that same feeling of density, but just a little bit more softness down in there. So as I flip that off and on, that to me is the right idea. I'm just kind of picking up my bottom black point and finessing this toe area of the image. And it's probably something that I'll return to uh, on a couple different points throughout my timeline and continue to refine. I want it to be the same, but I also want to keep dialing it in. So I'm not afraid to bounce back and forth between here and my shot level adjustments. So that's item number one here for our global look. And the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to cool off the image. Now, we're actually going to do this here with our custom curves. I might normally think to do a sort of uh, color bias or a color wash with something like my primaries, with my offset, or maybe even with my gamma or my gain. In this case, the image that I feed into this portion of the node tree is going to tend to be very underexposed, right? Because that's what I'm doing in my exposure node. So as a result, I want to have the context of being able to see where my image is living, as I do here in the histogram of my curves. And I want to be able to target that area, and I want to be able to operate on that area in a more focused way as opposed to just spinning my offset ball or something like that. So I'm going to ungang my color channels and I'm simply going to start to subtract red. That's going to be my baseline adjustment. And I'm going to subtract it from this area here where I see the uh, biggest amount of uh, the signal mass sort of gathering, if that makes sense. So I'm going to start pulling this down. And of course, pulling red is going to give me pure cyan, right? Now I'm going to pair that with some green so that instead of anchoring right towards cyan, I want to end up somewhere kind of here in between cyan and blue. So I'm going to grab that green channel and start pulling it down. And you can see that as I do that, I'm starting to rotate the signal closer toward blue. I don't want to go all the way. I'm not going to pull that green as far down as the red. I just want to get a little bit somewhere in between cyan and blue as opposed to that sort of pure uh, cyan that I had a moment ago. Again, this is a feel based thing. I may revisit this at a couple different points when I'm working through a day for night scene, but that's a pretty good start there. And these two things to me are going to form the consistent elements that are going to deploy at the tail of every grade and aren't going to change on a shot by shot basis. Okay. So let's now bounce back over to our shot level adjustments and look at what else we can do to sort of drive this agenda of our day for night feel or a day for night intent. Something else that I will often do with day for night scenes when grading at the individual shot level, not always, but I'm going to think about my contrast more in the highlights than in the shadows. My shadows are probably going to be pretty well handled by that adjustment that we just made in our shadows node at the timeline level. But here on my ratio node, I'm going to go and I'm going to look specifically at my highlight wheel here in the HDR zones palette, because I want to make a pretty targeted adjustment and just look at getting a bit more kind of ping out of my very, very peak highlights in this image. Because again, if you sort of picture in your mind's eye being in a highly visible, but also clearly nighttime scene or setting, something that you'll see if you really focus in on the details of that image is that actual highlights like light hitting the uh, body of water that we see here. Those are actually going to be quite pingy, quite healthy. They're not going to be knocked down quite as much as might be happening as a result of our exposure adjustment. So this is going to be what my focus is here in this ratio node. And I may need to expand out my HDR palette and take my minimum range and perhaps lower it just a little bit so that I'm getting more of those highlights sort of included in the deal. So in this shot doesn't seem hugely necessary. I think my highlights are sitting in an okay place, but it's something I'm going to keep a close eye out for and adjust as needed. And the last thing that I want to do here, if I go down to the sort of secondary branch of my node tree here, I want to add a power window and I need to deal with this sky. I mentioned skies a moment ago. They're one of the trickier things to finesse when we are doing day for night looks because being able to see the sky in general is more a hallmark of the day than nighttime, right? So we're going to do 
everything that we can to try to get more of that night feel up in this area. I'm just kind of outlining this region and we could try a couple different things. We could try offset, we could try gamma, we could even stay here in our HDR palette and use our highlight wheel. In my case, I'm just gonna try the gain and see if that doesn't get the job done. And I think that's pretty good. Now, another principle that I'll point out to you, we're doing a lot with a day for night look when we pull it out, aren't we? If I turn this off, that's where we started. Here's where we are now, right? So I don't expect to get fully satisfied with this image with my first crack at grading it. I'm gonna to try to get the ideas out there and sort of represent it in the frame. And then I'm gonna move on pretty fast without getting too fixated on like, well, is this window that's controlling the sky doing enough or doing the right thing? I'm just not sure yet. I'm gonna to need to look at this image with fresh eyes because I've already been parked here for a while, okay? But what I do have now after having done these adjustments is I have a template that I can begin to follow with my other shots. As we've said, these adjustments that we did here at the timeline level, they're gonna be here waiting for me when I go, for example, to shot number one. They're already in place. And I can paste my work from shot number three and have my baseline now represented, okay? In this case, I don't need this power window quite yet. I might do a different power window in a moment, but for now I don't need that one. And I'm just gonna go in and revisit my primaries. So let's go to my exposure. And I'm gonna open this up as far as I can while still having the image feel night-ish, if that makes sense. And then here on my ratio node, I'm gonna do something a bit different in this node than I would typically advise. I'm actually gonna go over to that highlight section of my HDR palette, and I'm gonna look at warming this up a little bit because I feel like my highlights are taking on a sort of unnatural cool hue to them. So I'm gonna see if I can't neutralize that a little bit by moving this highlight trackball sort of northwest, if that makes sense. And again, it's probably gonna take me more than one pass to really get that dialed in, really get happy with it. But as a starting point, that gets the idea on the page and that's feeling pretty decent to me to begin with. And last thing I might do here is look at using a power window to add some more weight, to add some more nightishness, to make up that word again here in this frame. I'm gonna do a sort of asymmetrical vignette and just focus on knocking down that lower left-hand corner. So we'll flip this to be an inverted node and we could use either offset or maybe just gain as I'm using right now, although I'm on my HDR palette. So let's reset that, go to our primaries and pull that in like so. And maybe it is offset. Let me flip that off, try our offset and bring that down. Great example of another instance where it's, it's just feel. It's just what looks good, what feels good, what looks right within this sort of framework that I'm providing for you. So that might be a little bit aggressive, but something like that gives me the feeling or the understanding of what's happening. And it also gives me uh, an appropriate level of sort of nightishness to the frame. And I'm actually gonna see if I can't bring my base exposure down just a little bit further, like so. So that'll be kind of my treatment here on shot number one. Let's now look at shot number two. And once again, paste our starting point from shot number three and then rework things. So my exposure is gonna need to come quite a bit more open. I'm actually gonna go more open than you would think because I know I can knock things down, down here in my secondaries branch with a big soft window that I'm gonna do around my subject and then knock down everything that is outside of it, like so. So let's go here and bring that down. And this is another frame where I'm gonna to need to deal with my sky, right? Now let's look at the motion of this frame. We've got some movement, so it's not gonna be as simple as doing a static window up there on uh, the upper left where I'm seeing that very hot sky poke through. So instead, what I think I'm gonna to try to do is go over here into my highlights and try to bring that region in like so. And that way it's gonna travel no matter what happens with the shot. And here's an instance where I would probably go and expand this out and look at controlling this range like so and maybe increase the fall off as well. The goal being to create a nice, gentle, soft adjustment that brings those values back in. And then I can keep going here. I'm just gonna keep pulling it and see how far I can go before it looks crazy. Something that you'll find, this may change depending on the day for night look that you're doing. But now I've done two shots where there's sky in place and I can probably start to get a sense for where on my meters I want my skies to live. So it looks like they're living somewhere around my 640, kind of my halfway or a little above halfway point 
there in the meters. So if this, instead of being a three shot sequence was a 30 shot sequence, I would probably start to aim my skies or my highlights kind of at that zone again, in the interest of some consistency. So that's the idea with getting that overall day for night look in place so that you can begin to do the real work of a day for night feel, which is to finesse things at the individual shot level, to take advantage of opportunities, and also to find a way to shape the frame to feel dark without necessarily being too dark to see. And that's really what I wanna leave you with is that your image needs to feel dark, not to look dark, right? Or feel like night rather than looking like night. If it looks like night, it's probably not gonna be that much fun to look at. If it feels like night, then you have succeeded in a sort of imaginative exercise that is a successful day for night rendering of your images. Day for night is a big subject and we've really only just scratched the surface here today. There's a ton of different techniques, a ton of different ideas that you can incorporate. It's gonna depend on what your material is, whether you're not gonna be able, even able to begin that process or successfully tackle it in the first place. But it's a really fun subject to explore. Old Hollywood movies with a really successful day for night photography process that are well timed and mastered uh, in the final print. Some of my favorite images in the history of movies. So I love playing around with this look. It's obviously not for every project, but it's a great trick to have up your sleeve when the need does arise. We're gonna talk a lot more about this subject in this Friday's live session, grade school, at 10 a.m. Pacific time uh, this coming Friday. So if you have more questions on anything that I talked about today or questions about day for night in general, then definitely come join us. It's always a fun session on Friday mornings and we're gonna break this subject down in a lot more detail than we've been able to do today. And in addition, I'm gonna give you a power grade based on the adjustments that we made today so that you've got a kind of fun framework to start using to play around with your own day for night looks. See you soon.